Hey, I'm Erica. And I'm Jules. Most people have at least one thing that they can't or won't eat. Yeah, we're definitely like that. We started this podcast to talk about the gluten-free food industry. Like new products and some of the stories behind your favorite brands. And living life with a specialty diet and also some important healthcare topics. Since we're basically both broken inside. You had me at eat. Hello, welcome to another episode of You Had Me Eat. I'm Erica. I'm Jules. And we're here talking about things. things. Lots of things. Lots all of the things. things. So uh, many things. Jules, Jules is in a new location. Look at how bright and sunny and beautiful it is there. So and beautiful. she's not wearing her sling. What's up with that, Jules? Um, well, I'm, my um, orthopedist said that I'm supposed to take the sling off here and there so that I don't get frozen to shoulder. Mm. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. Who knew? No, I might not that. It's really? not fun. Yeah, okay. I got to do a lot of physical therapy to get that. Uh, I can no, stop. Don't do that. I, I can't do that. Yeah. That, Whoop, pop. Whoop. Yeah, Gross. that's what that's what my shoulder does when when you shrug like that. That's my shoulder pops. So no, you're making me. That's disgusting. I don't want to do uh, that. No. Yeah. So, so that's my, my shoulder is liberated. <laughs> Good for your shoulder. It I mean, hurts. Out of the say last hurts. time, the more that you send thoughts and prayers, the <laughs> faster she'll get out of her sling. It's it's because of the listeners. Mm, thank you. Yeah, thank you, listeners. Yes. Um, so news for me is uh, that the Super Bowl is this weekend, which is usually eh, just another sport thing, but it happens to be in Arizona. And not only is the Super Bowl in town, but also a huge, huge, huge golf tournament that we have every year. And it is insane on any roadways. And there's so many events happening in different parts of the city and activations throughout all the city. Like Guy Fieri is doing a big um, free event with like cooking stuff. There's like a food and wine thing. Mm across this other part of this the state and it's just like oh my god leaving your house (laughs) i know so i'm I'm landlocked in my house and my whole foods and my gym is really like all because i know that there's nothing happening here like the second you get on a freeway i'm like dude no way no way yeah um and like espn has been here forever um which is cool because you never know who you're gonna spot at like a restaurant that you go to but like i don't want to go to a restaurant So it sucks because there's this new food truck that I was told about, Dupe Loops, that we yeah. have discussed. Um, and apparently they're going to be around the Super Bowl, and I yeah. will not be there to check them out. But they do a, a gluten-free, dairy-free fried donut. Yeah, allergen-free, and, um, like no soy, no nuts. Like I've heard that amazing. their donuts are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so my girl, Caitlin, was doing a giveaway on her Instagram, and that's how I got to know them. And, uh, so yeah, I'm really hoping to try them out because I do love a good, uh, fried donut. It's like probably my favorite thing. And I, you know, only had several throughout my illustrious mm-hmm. career as a, as a celiac blogger to travel the country and try donuts. Um, so I'm really excited to try this and to know that it's like in my city yeah. and I can like get it whenever I want, but I will not try it for several weeks now because I can't thank you. Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah, that's okay. But the Dupe Loops is going to stick around after the Super Bowl. So you as a native there can go and find them afterwards. So that's good. Yeah. At least it's so, not yeah. just a Super Bowl thing. That would have been yeah. a bummer. That would have been really horrible. Um, I mean, I can't see Guy Fieri again, but I think I'll be okay. You could survive that. I think I can. <laughs> um, he's a big Suns fan, so maybe I'll see him in another Suns game. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well... It's it's odd that all of these things are happening on the same weekend. You think they'd have better planning? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you plan for Super Bowl years in advance. That's what you have to do. But um, I think that they think because Phoenix is so spread out that like, oh, we can handle that influx. But like, I can't imagine what an airport's going to be oh, right now. Brutal. You know, what it's going to be like on Monday and Tuesday. It's going to be horrible. But I mean, yeah. all these people have private planes anyway. Um, but I mean, like the people that are in town for the Super Bowl and the people sure. that are in town for all these golfing events. So yeah, it's just a nightmare here. And I would just like... I really like had plans for this weekend to do mm-hmm. things. And now I'm like, nope. So I'm just going to like work out and uh, work on my office and maybe uh, do some Valentine's Day stuff. Yeah. Which is a good segue into our next topic, which is <laughs> Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. It's Valentine's a big, 
baking holiday. Um, yeah. It well, and isn't for me. The Super Bowl is stuff, too, yeah. by the way. I mean, uh, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I have I have two roundups on my website for one for like the Super Bowl, honestly, and you know, party food, and I've got like thirty nine gluten free recipes on there for the Super Bowl, and and I have another one for Valentine's Day. It's got like forty recipes on there, and and we're not talking just you know, make nachos or whatever. Yeah. I and mean, these are like yeah. cool recipes, you know, baked brie and, um, you know, spinach pull apart bread and, you know, really kind of funky, fun party recipes. Are and there potato skins? Yes. Potato skins are, is one of the recipes, which is, I mean, you gotta have potato skins as a recipe, but soft pretzels, you know, all kinds of fun Ooh, recipes. Yeah. That is a good Super Bowl recipe. It is a good Super Bowl recipe. And they're not as hard as you would think, but all of those recipes are on there in my uh, party recipe roundup. I also make a, a pretty cool football cake, which is very fun because you don't even need a special pan for that. You just use, you know, rounds or squares and you can make the base is um, your turf as it were. And then you just cut from your other one. You just cut the shape of a football and you put it on top of the other cake standing up and it's a picture. You can see the picture of the cake um, on my site. It's a separate recipe too. It's pretty fun. Okay. That I might have to make. It's that's very cool. It's really fun. Yeah. And it's <laughs> seriously, I am not God's gift to cake, to cake decorators by any stretch of the imagination. This is not a hard cake to make. And you just, you know, it's chocolate for the football, right? And then you just draw the little... Um, yeah, you know, stitching lines. on the football, and and you cut That'd be out such a good cake pop. It would be a good cake pop. So if for Easter, I make cake pops the shape of Easter eggs, yes. and it's basically oh, the same totally thing. Just do a football. For a football. <gasps> you could okay. So you're cutting some cake out from around the outside of your either your round or your square that you're cutting the football from. That's mm -hmm. what you use to make cake pops. Mm -hmm. So you could do both. I'm seeing, I'm seeing your eyes. The wheels turning. Big. That means the wheels are turning. I just, I wasn't going to do anything because I'm like, ugh. ugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I love, I don't care about the Super Bowl this year, although the two brother storyline is super adorable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I wasn't planning on doing anything, but like, yeah. if I could do those football cake pops, mm -hmm. that would be super cute. But you could do that with a leftover cake and still do the football cake. Too. Right, right. This is not going to be as complicated as your turkey cake, but... I know. I know. I do love a good turkey cake. Um, <laughs> well, that's interesting because I thought it was only going to bake for Valentine's Day, but I mean, I do have time to bake for you Super Bowl. You do. You do. Huh. But anyway. what I was going to share for you about Valentine's Day is... It's similar to this. Picture. Similar to yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Is this cake that I mm -hmm. made... Isn't yeah. it so pretty? It's beautiful. So and maybe uh, you are God's gift to cake decorating. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm just a, <laughs> a cake decorator heart. Uh, so it's basically just a, um, a a giant heart cake. And why it's so easy is it just requires a square and a circle pan loaf. And you have they, to obviously call get kind of round cake pans here. The circle pan loaf, you know, whatever. <laughs> circle pan loaf? It's yeah. a round cake pan, okay? <laughs> a round cake pan and a square cake pan. Okay. What make size sure that round you, cake pan? Just make sure that when you cut the circle, it's a circle pan, pan loaf, the <laughs> diameter, the circle pan loaf, when you cut the circle pan circle loaf in half, pan. that it matches up with one of the sides of the so square they should, pan. Let's, let's make it easy for the listeners. Let's call them all eight inches. Okay. So an eight inch square and an eight inch round would marry listen, nicely together. Listen, I don't know any of the measurements <laughs> of my circle pan loaves or my square oh my pan loaves. All right. I okay. just know that looks like it's going to fit. That, and if it does, then it's a happy accident. Eyeball. <laughs> yeah. Is that not what, that normal, hurt my that's arm. What, that's what, first of all, maybe that's a sign. Don't I make know. fun I'm going to put my sling on. I'll be right back. <laughs> Good God. I'll stop making fun of you now. First of all, Start normal people, <laughs> I guarantee you that normal, we're going to put up a poll, that normal people don't know the dimensions of their pants. I get that question all the time on my blog. If I do not leave a, an exact dimension of whatever it was that I put up on there, people are like, I need to know, is that an eight by four or a nine by five? 
And I'm like, I don't okay. know if these people are not normal because I feel like normal <laughs> people don't care. Like when they're like, when I bake cakes, I never pay attention to what pan that they're in. And I know that that's a problem. And I it know does that make I a difference. Do that. It does make a difference. I'm yeah. aware of that. But I, I have to go get like the tape measure from like Matt's work box. Oh, and totally. Like, what are those? I don't know. Yeah. This is. I don't know what it is. You know what bugs me about loaf pans while we're on the subject? It's not circle pan loaf pans, but like the ones that you long and yeah, you, know, yeah. you normally typically yeah. bake, bake like a, a bread in. It, what bugs me is when you go to measure them with your tape measure that you get out of Matt's you know, toolbox mm-hmm. and the bottom is one measurement and the top mm-hmm. is another mm-hmm. one. Which mm-hmm. one is the right measurement? Because they, they're smaller and then they sort of flare out a little bit. Which one is the one you measure? I don't know. These are the things that keep me up at night. Wait, do you know the answer? Because I feel like if anyone has to know the answer, it's you. <clears throat> well, I feel like I it's the bottom. I That's where like, the batter goes first. Yeah, it's it's weird because I feel like I have the answer, but I'm not certain that it's right. Because it's a 50 50 <laughs> shot. Jules. No, because I think I have it right, like with my pans. But then I, I'm not entirely sure I can use, use that guidance to apply to everyone else's pans. Because when I go to measure my pans, I'm like, okay, okay, this seems to be right. But it's like some of my pans, I, some my favorite pans are the ones that are straight up and down because I, I don't have to figure it out. But I think, I think it's the bottom measurement, but then it seems to be a little bit different sometimes. So it's like, ugh, I don't know. But I think it's the bottom measurement. My favorite, my favorite pans are the ones that are straight. My second favorite pans are the ones that tell you on the bottom. Because <laughs> they yeah. write on the bottom of the pan. But I feel then like I just need that. to like write on Sharpie because that yeah. will come off. Like mm-hmm. what the measurements and diameters of my yeah. circle pan loaves are. I think no, circle pan. Yeah. Well, the round pans are always straight. It's the loaf pans that flare. No. And that's annoying. At least I know that. I have no, several loaf pans. I'm not saying you I have didn't a straight up one, a flare one, <laughs> and then I have a Pullman loaf. The Pullman is straight. It's always straight. Yours is flare. It's not. Mine's not. <gasps> then it's and not I have to a go to a Pullman. specialty store in uh, Utah to get it. What does Utah have to do with anything? It has my that restaurant supply store that I go to. Oh, well, there, there are restaurant supply stores other places besides Utah. But it's the best one. Okay. That you know of. Ever. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Okay. Back to the Super Bowl. Anything else you're going to be baking? No, I didn't even know I was going to be baking for Super Bowl. For Valentine's Day, yes, maybe I was going to do this heart cake. But now I'm all like, oh, God, do I have to measure things? And now I'm just discouraged. Now your circle circle pan loaf is questioning everything. Well, do you remember for um, Christmas when I did that? Um, pull apart Christmas tree with the I made that vegan no, Nutella. The <laughs> no. Oh no, the, the tree cupcake with shape like the tree. Oh yes, okay, yeah, with the twisty the things. It was the okay. puff pastry, and I mm-hmm. did the the vegan Nutella. So that was based upon another recipe that I created years ago for the Super Bowl. That was a it's sort of like a sunshine type of um, shape. And, and it's like a wreath and it's got all the twisties in it, but it's a, it's a spinach artichoke filling instead. And that's awesome for the Super Bowl because it's not sweet. It's like a, you know, just a savory thing that you can pull out and have people um, just pull off little pieces of the twists and eat. And it's so good. And um, I also make that vegan as well. Is um, it with, with your flour mix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you use the GF Jules flour to make the pastry dough. And then you put one layer down and then you put your spinach artichoke filling and put another layer down and then you cut into the center and leave Mm -hmm. like a round ring in the Mm -hmm. middle. I like put a cup down in the middle so I make sure I don't cut in too far. And then you just twist all Mm -hmm. of the little um, pieces in um, for the wreath and it's beautiful. The presentation is just stunning. Um, But I might make that again for the Super Bowl party this year. Do you even watch the Super Bowl? Um, my husband is in advertising, so we watch okay. the ads. I mean, yeah, that's I, I was in advertising too, and that's the only reason yeah. why I watched the whole show. So, no, we've been watching a lot of football this year because um, 
his son, my stepson is in oh, yeah, yeah. Um, really big in football. And hmm. um, so he knows a lot of the players. And um, so, yeah, um, we've been really enjoying the season, actually. I'm not not like a big fan of the teams that are in the the, the Super Bowl this year. But Can like, you name the teams that are in the Super Bowl this year, Jules? Oh, who's in it? Um, Kansas City. And... Uh, let me think. Um, who's you want a hint? Team? Want a hint? Um, yeah, give me a hint. I'm uh-uh. blanking. What? Ah. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, I just want to hear you do that again. Ah. 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 Seahawks. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, it's I know it's eagle. not the Seahawks. Jesus. Oh, it's I know eagle. it's the Eagles. No, it's Philadelphia because um, they have had an absolutely amazing season. They, they've they been doing so well. Um, Good for them. Good for I know. them. Yeah, I know. So let's talk about Valentine's Day food. I obviously may make my cake or may just make cupcakes. I don't know. Um, but what are your, because I know that you have a round mm. of also Valentine's Day foods. What are I your do. favorites? Well, you got to make the sugar cookies, first of all. I'm totally making sugar cookies this weekend. Although, I got to bring this back to the Super Bowl for a second. Have you seen my football player sugar cookies that I make? No. Okay. So, I, sometimes I make them as sugar cookies. Sometimes I make them as gingerbread men. But I have this, this oh. running gingerbread man cookie cutter. I've seen the gingerbread it's, man. It's hilarious because then I, I put a little football jersey on him with a number and – Instead, he's a gingerbread football player, and I love making those for the Super Bowl. So I might end up just making <laughs> – I yes. might end up. I have seen it because um, I've seen them as gingerbread men. Yes. So I don't – I might make them as sugar cookies, though, instead of making the sugar cookies for Valentine's Day because I love sugar cookies with the sugar – the the icing, the sugar cookie icing, instead of making them as so gingerbread cute. men. I don't know. I, I got to make those, though. I love – sugar cookies are – in my like top 10 of all recipes ever. I just love sugar cookies. Um, so got to make those, but I, I have been hoarding these frozen cherries for a really long time. Um, they're because I'm going to make these mini cherry pies for, um, Valentine's day. I'm, I like chocolate, but I'm not like, chocolate's yeah. not yeah. my jam. I, I would prefer a vanilla cake over chocolate cake, for example. Um, so, and pies, you know, me and pies, like I am. The oh my God. Your pie. hand pies are so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, a few years ago, I started taking my hand pies, which have like my classic homemade gluten-free pie crust recipe, which everybody must try at some point in their lives. Cause it's just, it, it's really like a no fail pie crust recipe. It's so easy. It's only like three ingredients, but, um, you, if you're nervous at all about making a homemade pie crust, it's a great intro for it because all you're doing is taking a small um, cookie cutter and you're cutting out, you know, little pies. So you're not having to Mm -hmm. transfer a big pie crust, which you can do with my pie crust recipe, but this is a great intro. So you cut out your like hearts um, with a big, you know, cookie cutter with this pie crust and you put a little bit of the pie filling. I'm going to use those cherries that I was referencing and make a homemade pie filling, or you can buy canned pie filling. Put it in the middle, put another heart on top, pinch them together, use a fork or whatever you want to do to seal them together. And I would bake them like normal pie. Um, But then a few years ago, what I started doing was then at the end, I would throw them into the air fryer. And I'm telling you... It's brilliant. It is... Total chef's kiss because it throws me back every time to when I was a kid and my mom would treat me to those McDonald's. Oh my God, yes. Those yes. nasty yes. little pies that are so bad for you. I'm sure they're like preservative laden and whatever. I don't care. We've all had them and they're so dang good. You know, they come in that little sleeve. Mm-hmm. How many times have you burned your mouth on that filling in there because they come out of the fryer and they're just like, oh, they're so good. When you make these little hand pies and you finish them in an air fryer, they are spot on McDonald's pies. And they're the bomb. Do you airbrush them with anything before you airbrush them? Do you brush them with anything between you put them in the air fryer? Circle Circle pan pan loaf. loaf. (laughs) 
Um, you can. Um, you can obviously brush them with an egg wash. You could um, brush them with milk or mm -hmm. with oil. That helps to crisp them up a little bit. Um, it just depends on if you want them to be vegan or not. Um, but yeah, just, and then a little cinnamon sugar on top of them. <gasps> anyway, the recipes on my site, um, I will drop the link to the roundups in the liner notes, but mm -hmm. I'll also specifically add the link to those hand pies, which is, yeah. and then, and then they're portable. I mean, you, you can't beat like a portable pie, put that in your kid's yeah. lunch or, um, you know, in your, in your lunch, <laughs> like, like, Hey, Eat Ooh. them all day long directly from yeah. the air fryer oh, like I would do. So good. Um, so another good. thing that you have on your um, roundup is the big cookie cake. Yeah, that is so it's fun. It's like so, I just like feel like that that's like a must make for everyone. Yeah. Well, and there are a few different ways you can do that too. You could do the that as a sugar cookie. And mm -hmm. you can, I try to write recipes on my site a couple different ways where that, where I have a mix specifically for it, I'll tell you, you can use my sugar cookie mix. Cause of course that makes your life the easiest possible, but I also give you a from scratch recipe for it. So you can make it with my flour and just make it from scratch or just use the sugar cookie mix. Um, but you could also make it as a chocolate chip cookie or an oatmeal mm -hmm. raisin cookie. That's what I would do. Oh, yeah. gross. For sore reasons. Well, you can Get take out, out the raisins. You can make it as an oatmeal cookie. But uh, yeah, definitely. I think that uh, um, my favorite would be the chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. So, well, so what I'm going to do. And it's super easy. And then you could use my um, my cookie mix for that to make the oatmeal cookie or to make it as a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Either one. It's sort of super doing. easy. Or I'm you can just make it, it myself. from scratch. <laughs> just dump it and go. But all you this need for that is a big round um, pan and then put parchment down. I'm sorry. Can... What is it called? What is it's it called? a circle pan. Yeah. <laughs> And you um, put parchment down and then you just press the dough out um, to be flat and bake it. And it's, it, again, so easy. And, and wait you just for shape it to cool it before until... you ice it. Ice it, yeah. And then on that note, though, you don't just think it has to be savory because you can do pizzas that way, too. Did you see the pizzas on my site I that did. are heart shaped? I did. And everyone's like, how did you do that? I'm like, all you do is you make your homemade pizza crust. Again, you can use my pizza and crust mix, or you can do it from scratch with a recipe I'm going to say. And instead of pressing it out in a circle, you just make it into a heart shape. You're making a shape with your hands when you're pressing the pizza dough out anyway. And you just make it like, you know, pinch it to a point in one part and then a heart in another part. So it's so easy. But when you're doing any of these things, the, the large cookie or the pizza, make sure you exaggerate the shape because they will, it'll spread as it out, bakes yeah. and you'll lose the heart, especially at the top. If you just make it a subtle shape. So exaggerate the shape when you're doing it. Hmm. Anyway, what were you I'm going to make so cookie. I'm going to make your cookie, um, heart cake uh -huh. with these inside. What is that? Of, Choco um, yums. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. M&M yeah, knockoffs from Yummer that are dairy free. So we're going to yep. make these into your cookie pie or cookie, um, cake with yes. the big heart so we're gonna that'll be perfect instead of just chocolate chips but yeah mm. i'm very excited because i'm like what am i gonna do with them i'm like they're so cute i had to buy them and then i'm like wait i don't give out valentine's what am i gonna do with 15 individual <laughs> packs i'm like of course i'm gonna eat them all uh so that's i'm gonna perfect. put them into like a giant cookie so yeah that's what we're gonna do with it that's perfect and make sure you put the link to those in the um in the liner notes too because i think a lot of people would like to know that they could buy those as valentine's yeah, there um there's so many great Valentine's Day stuff out there that are uh, gluten free and dairy free and vegan. Like um, Lesser Evil has Valentine's Day pops. Oh my god, they're the cutest things ever. Hold on. <laughs> so these are the Lesser Evil sweetheart pops. So the good thing about them is obviously they're gluten free and vegan, mm -hmm. but they are white chocolate strawberry flavor. And I know that that sounds weird. I'm obsessed with these. And wow. I um, talk to the guys at Lesser Evil because this is a Valentine's Day exclusive every year. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you ever going to make that into a full-time flavor? Because I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with this flavor. And they're like, no. So every year on Valentine's Day, you got to go and stock up because you won't get them for another year. Mm -hmm. So I go to like Target and buy gonna ask where snack racks. Mm -hmm. Target. That's where I get all of my Valentine's Day, like gluten free vegan stuff. There's so many things this yeah. year. Like, that's where I got the Yum Earth. That's where I got the Lester Evil. There's another, yeah. um, like, gar veggie garden or whatever has their vegetable hearts. 
Oh my God. They're yeah. So I love those. I get the ones for so the, the booze or whatever for Halloween yeah, and so, Valentine's yeah. Day, or for Halloween. Yeah. So, um, same with, same with Halloween at Target is they have a separate area that's just like for the allergy friendly. And so I stock up. So every year I'm obsessed with these. And so we just buy them in bulk. So like, I'll go to every Target and just be like, Ooh, in my cart because they're usually <laughs> all taken care of or all gone by the time it's Valentine's Day. And I'm just like, so that brings up a good point. I've always wondered this about you, Erica, because this is, I think this is a good character question for anyone to ask of someone else. When you see something like that at the store, and, am I a hoarder? <laughs> no, it, it's a little deeper question than that. Do you take all of them? Like if there's only like three of something left, or do you leave one for someone else? This is like, you know, just one of those. Hmm. I, wondered I would them. always try to leave some mm -hmm. for someone else. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but if that's my third target I've been to, because yeah. believe me, there are like four targets that I can hit in this general area. Yeah. And I have gone to a point where like every, I think this happened last Valentine's day where the lesser evil guys are like, you've got to get them now. So, and that's also happened during Christmas too. There are certain Christmas things that I can get. And yeah. I had to go to the different targets to get it. And I'm like, listen, if I've been to three targets and this is the last target, that's yeah. all I have, I'm going to wipe them out. Yep. But like, if it's like the sharp puff pastry crust, when that was super big and everyone mm -hmm. was trying to get it, I would always leave one. Like, of course yeah. I want to get as much as I can, but like, I'm not going to hoard it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like, Maybe. I feel like I know you better now. That's Thanks good. Jules. It only took no, no judgment. this many years. <laughs> this many years. <laughs> All right, Jules, you want to talk about sushi? Yeah. So, um, where were you, back. by the way, when this happened? Okay, so, well, I was on a trip um, to Utah, since you brought up Utah earlier. Oh, um, yeah. Utah again. Um, I was on a trip to Utah, and um, we were looking for places to eat. And as you know, um, well, it's difficult to find places to eat gluten-free when you're on the road. Um, but some of the places that I find that are easiest to eat out at are... Um, ethnic restaurants. So we go Thai, Indian, sushi. And, you know, you have to narrow it down when you're there. You always have to still ask the questions, the normal questions. But um, we were sitting at a uh, sushi bar, which I think is easiest when you're eating sushi anyway, because you can grill the people, the at, people. The, yeah, at the sushi bar. And we were watching them make stuff and what's your favorite role and, you know, whatever. And the guy was super nice and we, and they were really busy. So we watched him make a ton of rolls, but you know, when you're eating sushi, we all know you have to avoid, you know, soy sauce. Um, they'll bring you gluten-free soy sauce at the table, but what they make their stuff with in the back mm -hmm. is always going to be the soy sauce that has wheat. And you have to avoid the tempura flakes and you have to avoid the fake crab and you have to anything avoid anything that's fried. Yeah. Anything that's fried and any of the other sauces that also include soy sauce, which can vary by restaurant. So we mm -hmm. were talking to him about, you know, what are your sauces that you use that have um, soy sauce in it? And he was saying, you know, well, our ponzu sauce has soy sauce in it. You know, mm -hmm. this other citrus sauce has it in there. Um, you know, other things like that. And then a year or two ago, um, I think it was Scott uh, from Gluten Dude was pointing out that he had ordered some uh, edamame and it was ended up being boiled in the same water as his udon, as udon noodles. So it came out and had udon noodles in it. So that became a thing where everyone's like, okay, you have to make sure your edamame is boiled in separate water. We didn't order edamame that night or whatever, but th those are some highlights, right? And then miso soup. I never eat the miso soup at, at sushi restaurants because although miso is soy and that should be fine, you don't know whether they've added barley to it or not. Right. And it's just too complicated mm -hmm. to go through that yeah. with them. It's so not worth it. It's know? not worth it. So I, I didn't order the miso soup, but we happened, the guy was just so good and was so gregarious and chatty. I, I happened to say, do you mind if I film you, you know, while you're making these sushi rolls for us? And he's like, no, 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 go for it. You know, whatever. Um, so I, I, my arm was in a sling. So, um, my <laughs> husband was videoing him, um, while he was like making these sushi rolls and he's talking through this with us. And he says, you know, making the gluten-free rolls for you. And these are the things that I'm leaving out because they have gluten in them. And he says, and we're not putting the row in there because row has 
gluten in it. And roe is fish eggs. Fish eggs. And which obviously fish eggs don't contain gluten. But he said the roe has gluten in it as a binder. Binder. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so yeah. when he was done, I said, hey, can I see the package on the roe? And so he brought it out for me to see it. And sure as exactly what he said, the row came prepackaged in soy sauce, basically. And um, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, it, it all comes that way. And from all the manufacturers, they come in row. Now, this is obviously one sushi restaurant, but it's not mm -hmm. their house brand of Row. Okay. Right. And, you know, so they are ordering this in and he just said it like it was just the norm. Duh. And we're like, what? so I'm like mind blown. Yeah. And um, so I um, obviously I talked to someone else at the restaurant and they were like, yeah, this is very typical. This is we hmm. always anytime we order row, it comes from, you know, places like this and it comes in this way. Um, so I shared the information, um, you know, so that folks would, would know, you know, better safe than sorry, like maybe you should just avoid the row. Anyway, went to um, another sushi restaurant here in Maryland when I got home and sat at the bar and talked to the sushi chef there less accommodating in terms of wanting to show me their packaging, but was finally able to get someone there to show me one, um, one of their row packages. Yep. Same thing. Completely wow. different manufacturer, but also had, um, wheat on the label and was basically packaged with soy sauce in it. So, um, two things I would say, you know, as a gluten-free consumer, certainly if you have a wheat allergy, you know, no row for you. But um, as a gluten-free consumer, the easiest thing to do would be just say no row, you know, add that to mm -hmm. your list of things that you say when you're ordering sushi. You know, you don't have to go through, does your row have soy sauce? Blah, blah, blah. Just no row. But the second thing is, um, because I did get some pushback from some other people, um, you know, in DMs in the community who are saying, you know, this is so reactionary and you're scaring people and blah, 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 blah. Um, I get that, but mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, we're here to give information to people and let people do with it what they will, because right. our, our disease and our, our situation, um, be it whatever, you know, your particular situation is, why you are avoiding gluten or wheat, uh, you know, your reason for that maybe different from Erica's and mine because we have celiac disease, but um, all you can do is give people information and people can do with that what they will. I am absolutely not trying to make people panic yeah. or say, don't ever go to a sushi restaurant. There are just things that you can then go down the list when you're ordering your meals and say, yeah. don't put these things in my food. But the second piece of that is when you consider how tiny the amount of soy sauce would be that is residual on the row and how much row you would be getting in your dish. And when right. you look at the analysis of what 20 parts per million means to a person who has celiac disease, that means that in a day, you are only supposed to have up to 10 milligrams of gluten in your diet. It is highly unlikely that the amount of gluten you would get from the row in that dish would total 10 milligrams of gluten. So I'm not trying to say to someone that you are going to get so, so sick from yeah, having had threshold. some, yeah. right, to, to have had some of that row. Like if, if it had been placed on the top of your um, roll and you like, pushed it off or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't want anyone to like freak out and think you're going to die if some row touched your, um, your role. Okay. But um, I think it's good information to have. And if you can control 
you know, what goes into your food, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. this is what this information is, then it's, it's helpful, right? It gives you control and it gives you, I think, some power over what you can order and how to order it. Um, the other thing though, I will also say is that I have now been paying more attention to how sushi is made. And I have noted at both of these two sushi restaurants, just since I have, you know, paid attention with this row situation, that row goes into some other mixtures, not just on top. They'll throw it in for flavoring, um, whether or not they even say that they're putting it in there or not. Um, so you, I think if you do decide that yeah. you don't want row in your sushi, you have to actually tell them, um, you know, no soy sauce, no tempura, um, you know, no fake crab, no row. Like you have to like literally go through and just say, these are the things I do not want in my role or whatever. Yeah. I honestly think that the sauces are the hardest thing to avoid. Yeah. Row is like an identifiable part of it. Whereas sauces, yeah. you don't know what's been used. Uh, yeah. Ponzu sauce is a big one, which is hard because it's delicious. Right. And yeah. you can make it gluten-free, but like not at restaurants. So there is yeah. one sushi place in, in, in Utah that is, does really good. And they're like the best with, um, gluten-free. And then there's one here that I've been to and maybe a couple of other ones. Um, but it sushi is a harder one and you really have to find someone who is either their menus marked gluten-free or you've talked to people that have yeah. talked to people of the chef or the chef or anyone in the management's willing to talk to you because it's, it's, it's a difficult one. Things should be naturally done, but yeah. the way that some things are made are really hard. And, um, that fake crab is so, um, it's, it's everywhere ubiquitous. In a lot of rolls. Yeah. yeah. California roll. And like, it's the basis. But like, not so even many. just that. That's what's so weird. It's like, we went to a new sushi place and it was horrible by the way, but, um, mm. we went to a new sushi place and, um, I, they had fake crab in every single roll. Yeah. I'm like, ew. Gross. Yes. Yeah. Um, but usually at places like that, there is a way for you to upgrade to snow crab, like actual yeah. crab. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't, I'm just like, Oh God, what a gross piece of shit. Yeah. So, um, well, or tempura is in everything out. like, like tempura. Um, yeah. Shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just frustrating because I'm like, dude, I just want, and so you can get nigiri. I'm like, that's great. But chances are, if these rolls are just really poor quality roll, then the right. nigiri and sashimi is just going to not be great either. But like at Yellowtail, I'll just say, I mean, so Yellowtail in Las Vegas is my favorite sushi place, but I also spent $200 on one person. And I feel like that that's not oh, a real like easy oh, thing for a lot of people to just be like a ow. night out of town. Uh, it's delicious. And <laughs> it better have been delicious. Like, that Lord. bill came and I'm like, that is a lot of money for one person. Wow. Uh, I just ate a lot of sushi that night. Obviously. <laughs> oh I put it, my, my, I look back at my highlight reels. I'm like, I was having a good time. Yeah. Um, was it, yeah, did I you mean, order a boat? <laughs> no, oh, God, I wish it was a boat. Yeah, God, you got so double cool. decker shit for that phrase. I mean, I don't even, you, you look at the amount of food that I got and you'd be like, that was $200. I'd be like, yeah, it was um, delicious. But they really like were back and forth with me with the chef. The chef said that he recommends this and actually like this would be so much easier for you to get. It would be so much safer. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, like that's the kind of service that you want at a sushi mm -hmm. place. And I know that that's not accessible for a lot of people, not just like the $200 bill, but like a sushi place that they'll be able to talk to you. But I, yeah. I really do hope that you can find a place that you can have these safe meals without like questioning everything and just being scared because we don't want you to be scared every time no. you enter a restaurant. Like that's not the point of this. It's not the right. point of any of this. No, I have a question for you um, because I sort of struck this off my, my worry list a long time ago because I'd asked at so many restaurants and they nice. were like, Price. Um, and they were like, no, 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 no. Um, but then I had one of my readers say that she can't find um, safe rice. So it used to be that you, that we would say to people, you know, you also need to ask and make sure that the rice wasn't made with malt vinegar. All vinegar is gluten-free because it's distilled except for, except malt, for vinegar. malt vinegar. And um, we used to tell people, make sure that the vinegar used for the sticky rice is not malt vinegar. And 
I don't even say it anymore because I, I just haven't found a restaurant that uses malt vinegar. Yeah, I've in the never rice. ever heard of it right. either. Right. Right. Because it's all rice wine vinegar. Right. Like, that's right. the purpose of rice wine vinegar is to make sushi exactly. rice really. So like but I don't then I know had this, where this came from. I know, I, but I had this reader tell me that she can't in her wherever she lives, and I asked her where she lived, but she didn't respond. Um that all of the rice wherever she lives is made with malt vinegar. And I, I feel like, like people uh-huh. are just very confused that, yeah. that they they may have asked malt vinegar, but the people just hear vinegar and they're like, yeah, yeah. of course vinegar is used in sushi rice. Duh. Um, so you have to be really like ask follow-up questions. Be like, and oh, ask so to see the bottle. Ask That's to interesting. see the bottle Do you happen to have yourself? the bottle of yeah. it? And it's just like, oh, it's rice wine vinegar. Because yeah. if you made it with barley or malt vinegar it would have yeah. a very different Strong taste. taste yeah that's like what the fish and chips are made with like traditional yeah. fish and chips like malt vinegar yeah there that is a that is a flavor in and of itself and yeah. i feel like if that was in sushi rice that would be disgusting so yeah, yeah i've never ever worried about yeah. that yeah anyway just thought i'd ask because i was like no, i don't it's know a good question. Lives, but that's interesting it's a good question i feel like people are just not asking the right questions yeah. or they're taking someone's first answer as being like right. oh that's interesting instead of being like huh that seems strange can i see a bottle or like would mm-hmm. you mind asking what brand it is or like what it says on right. the label or the ingredient list like right play dumb and then get more information yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially when you're dealing with a language barrier, I yeah. usually, you can usually just say, can I see the package? And, and the person you're talking to is relieved because they don't have to I keep trying God. to yeah. translate and, and just show them. And then it's on you because you've read mm-hmm. it for yourself mm-hmm. and you say, yes, I can eat this or no, I can't not eat this. Yeah. So anyway, um, but we'll, put um, a link to my article, which has all this information in it with the pictures of the package which, with the row and all that stuff on it. We'll put those. Yeah, um, that was really interesting. Thank that. you for sharing that because yeah. something, I mean, it's not something that I order. So it's something that I'm like, hmm, interesting. I don't know if yeah. I ever would have thought about that, but. Yeah, a lot of a lot of places put the row on just as like a decoration because it's a bright yeah, a color. Yeah. Um, so it's just an add-in, but I think it's um, gross because it's like pop rocks, but with like fish. Yeah. Like, so I don't really am not into that. But like, yeah. if you are, I'm not here to judge you for your fish egg <laughs> obsession, but like not for me. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's that, not been really something cool. that I I liked either. But he was making something. It was like a a poke roll, and he said normally when we do this, we add the roe in with the poke, and yeah. it I guess it's texture or something. I was like. Okay. I don't need that. I don't need that texture. I'm good. Nope. I'm good. I'll pass. Thanks for now. <laughs> I'll pass, but um, good information to have. And that's what we're here for is just to share information. And again, not to scare yeah. anybody, but yeah. once you have the information, you do with it what you will. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jules. That yeah. is such an informative segment as always. Jules, Jules News Corner. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Will you stop doing that after like episode two? So I think we need to bring that back. All right. Um, you have a couple new products that you want to share. I do. I do. Um, and, and just a note about that, um, for those of you who haven't heard us do, um, new products before, and I guess we probably don't say it every time, but, um, we, uh, we get pitched a lot of new products. We always, oh have. we've been in this industry so forever. Many. Yeah, I mean, just because we both were editors of the magazine and just because we've been doing this for a really long time, we don't always um, bring those products to you. Um, no, because... we don't even say yes to a lot of these no, products. God, no, we get pitched like hundreds of stuff a day that, and we say yes to maybe like one or two. Yeah. And even those, like some of them are not worthy to share. Yes. And, and we are not here to bash brands either. Um, if, if yep. it's not safe or we're, we say no to it, um, you know, it doesn't meet, you know, and our, give them a our... stern talking to <laughs> say, stop pitching gluten-free people. This stuff is not safe. Exactly. Um, and we, and, you know, we'll also, you know, talk to brands, um, and give them our advice on to, as to how to make it safer, because we want, mm-hmm. we want more products out there for people, um, to be, you know, to be available for folks and to be safe. But um, when when we do try a product that we think is good, we will share it with you. And um, I'll tell you, first of all, about this one product that I'm going to share with you. I didn't particularly like it. And normally I wouldn't share it with you because I didn't like it. But I'm going to share it with you because my kid liked it and yeah. because it's a safe product. And that mm-hmm. means, you know, 
I'm just because I didn't like it doesn't mean it's a bad product. I personally did not care for it, um, but it's a safe product and you might like it. So I'm going to tell you about it. And um, it's from Tate's Bake Shop and they have a new cookie out. It's a lemon cookie. And um, all of the Tate's cookies are they're gluten free and um, they are crunchy and thin mm-hmm. and it did have a good lemon flavor, but the reason I didn't like it is because it like stuck to my teeth and Mm -hmm. I don't like stuff like that. Um, but my, my kid liked it and she shared it with some of her friends and they didn't have any problem finishing the bag. So there must not have been anything like on the surface wrong with it. But I think that it stuck to my teeth, um, just because it's a hundred percent rice flour. I'm just not, uh, I'm not a fan of Tate's Bake Shop because I just don't like crunchy cookies like that. I'm just not a fan. I'd I'd take a soft cookie any day. So when they launched their gluten-free cookies or even the Trader Joe's versions of them, just the same cookie, um, I just was never like a super fan, but like yeah. Matt really likes them. And yeah. there are like Tate's aficionados that are like the Tate's gluten-free cookie is the best cookie. Remember yeah. when we were doing the magazine and it was like favorite cookies and everyone's like Tate's and I'm like, what? Mm, yeah. I think these are super gross because I do not like the texture. I do. I'm not into them. Yeah. Right. But also he's super into them and everyone else is super into them. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I think it's just a personal preference. Yeah. I'm like, the cookie texture and whatever. That's just not my jam. Um, but when they, I saw that they had lemon stuff, I'm like, that's really cool. Like good yeah. for the people who love taste. They're going to love this cookie. And right. I love more safe offerings. Like we said, more safe offerings in the marketplace. Yep. If it's not for you, like you yep. obviously hate Oreos and um, I love them. And you're like, Hey, good on you guys. There's right. more safe offerings in the marketplace. Yep. It's available at every target that you ever walk into. So like, this is a good thing for our community. Exactly. It's just not my jam. Exactly. Yep. So, um, and it's made in a dedicated um, Mm gluten-free facility. So I'm very super into that. And if you like uh, a thin crunchy cookie and you're into lemon, which I totally am into lemon, um, then, you know, maybe that cookie is good, you know, a good one for you to try. And, so I, you know, we did our, our due diligence in terms of vetting the safety for you. And I know that there are some people who really like the cookies, so you might mm-hmm. want to look for it. Um, now this other product that I personally did really like, and you might've seen this in my reels or stories, it's called mm-hmm. Goals, G-O-A-L-Z. And I love their packaging. They have, oh, your, um, the packaging that came in was gorgeous. Oh, I know. I mean, just want to like touch it. It's like, it's got that soft um, sort of suede finish to it. Mm. But anyway, they come in these tubes, like mini, um, Pringles kind of cans for those of you who aren't able to see what, um, what I'm holding up here on YouTube, but, um, they're, it's a chocolate product and they're like discs. And so they're, you know, very easy to just have one or two. Um, the serving size is three, but they're uh, keto, paleo, diabetic friendly and vegan, of course, gluten-free and, there's a pistachio, sea salt, and coconut flavors, but they're, um, I'm always up for trying vegan chocolate because mm-hmm. it's hard to find good vegan chocolate. And these have zero sugar and they're made with allulose, which normally I'm like, I'll try them because those fake sugar kind of mm-hmm. things are, you know, sugar derivatives can have a, a kind of a nasty taste. And then I'm just going to give it a hard pass, but this did not have a nasty taste. So if you're looking for, um, a sugar free, you know, a zero Mm -hmm. sugar kind of, um, treat, these are really, um, these are really good. And, um, I'll just show you really quick what they look like. They're, you know, single serving is kind of like, that's what it looks like. So Hmm. easy to just eat one just for a little after dinner kind of thing or whatever. And they're for you. Really good. For you, for you. Um, <laughs> um, but like I said, it's, it's three, um, three of them is one serving. So, and it's allulose. Um, so have as much as you want. It's not like you're going to poop exactly. yourself. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, it's the ingredients are chocolate liqueur, cocoa butter, prebiotic fiber, allulose, and then this one has pistachios. So anyway, I thought they were really good. So that's awesome. Just in time for Valentine's Day, y'all. Mm-hmm. Chocolate. Yeah. So anyway, liked it. Awesome. We're going to have a ton of new products coming up. We, uh, Jules and I have the houseware show coming mm-hmm. up, uh, early March 
And then Expo West, which is the largest trade show of the year happening also in March. So it's going to be a very, very busy March from us. We may have some altered schedules due to that, but just so you know, why I'm telling you about this now at the beginning of February is we are getting pitched nonstop for these two shows. So my inbox, even since being in here, is just like new product, new product, new product, or like new, new things from new brands or new things from old brands and lots of stuff coming up. So if you're like, where have all the new products been, man, you guys are like all about new products and where have they been? Well, I'll tell you it's because we hit one trade show and that was just a trade show to get ready for this big trade show. So it's going to be pretty massive. Uh, it's going to be a very busy March. So stay tuned for that and uh, just wait until we get some new products to come on in and um, we'll have a lot for you. Don't worry. Do you want to just pick one Lucrocet product to show? Girlfriend. How can you <laughs> pick one? They're so good. I just recently renewed my partnership with Le Creuset, my love affair with Le Creuset. I got a chance to go to their factory to table event, which is really cool. They do like one city um, every now and then to have like this basically huge, huge, huge factory sale where they close out a lot of their products. So there's Le Creuset stores, Le Creuset outlets, and then this is like the closeout sale. You can get stuff for 60% off retail price pretty amazing. You can find a lot of stuff like the Harry Potter stuff uh, is there. They don't have any of the Disney stuff that's all gone by the time it hits the factory to table sale. But uh, I got a chance to go as a VIP member of the press. So I was there. I could purchase products early. And I will tell you, um, I bought a lot, bought a lot. <laughs> they knew what they lot. were doing when they invited you. <laughs> no, they did. They did. Um, and they sent me a really beautiful pan. So I guess I'll show you what they sent me because they're so sweet. Oh my God. So heavy. <laughs> Their stuff is all cast iron. Well, they have the stoneware line and a cast iron line. So I'll show you their beautiful cast iron that they sent me. Um, Square Baker. Ooh, ah. And this is the Cerise color, which is their red. But yeah. Cerise is so cherry pretty? in French. That's nice. <laughs> um, it is three quarts. I have to see. I have to look at the bottom. Just mm -hmm. like how you should with the inches of the yeah. circle pans, uh, circle loaf pans. So anyway, here's my circle loaf pan I wanted to show you from Lake Jose. <laughs> it's a circle loaf pan and a square motif. <laughs> this you can see because yeah, um, it's you can see the letter right now. Yeah, it's it's see, okay. and my nails match. In cerise. In cerise. Anyway, so I just got a bunch of stuff. Um, Oh, oh so heavy. I'm going to get a workout just from lifting that pan. Uh, so anyway, I was invited. They're super nice. Love Lake Crusade. We'll see them again at Housewares. Um, I just love their stuff. And like the people who collect them are all nuts, which is what I love. I love people who are obsessed with things. And the people who collect Lake Crusade are obsessed with things because they're like, oh, I have all one color. I'm a Cerise person. Like you literally go up to someone at the show and they're like, oh, I only collect Cerise or I only collect um, Oyster or I only collect whatever. Like they have a million different colors and they launch certain colors only in special stores and they have partnerships with like William Sonoma for other colors so that you can like go in there and get a William Sonoma exclusive. It's like, it's like a thing. It's like a cult. And I love that kind of stuff. That's why I love Disney. Everyone in there is in a cult. Everyone who is in Lake Crusade is in a cult, <laughs> but it's like the best cult because you can bake with it and stuff. Um, so it's really cool to see all these people just like get nuts about something, which is like my favorite thing. Anyone who's super passionate about something, I love. Practical cults are the best. Practical cults because I can use all these things. That's right. Make things with them. Um, but yeah, it's cool. We went there and it was just like, a, it was an event, man. They had like a... Um, in the parking lot, they had uh, uh, like a, a trailer set up, like someone's like RV or whatever. It's a, That's like a It's a Phoenix Lake Crusade Club. And you go there with your products and you swap them out. So I was going around. I'm like, does anyone have Cerise or Flame? Cerise or Flame? <laughs> and like, no, I'm sorry. I'm a sugar pink girl. And I'm like, okay, well, we can't trade anything then. It was just like trade. It felt very like trade or pogs. So pogs were my jam as a kid. And we would trade pogs. They're like little circle discs that you flip over. It was a game that happened in like the early 90s in elementary school. Ah, and I was a big pog collector. Like Pokemon. And, and you traded things. <laughs> yes. It's like the Pokemon, but for older people. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, 
that's how I felt like. And so it was really cool to be like, oh, let me see your collection. And they like showing pictures that it's like their babies. Like, here's my oh, collection. My. Here's what I got. And I'm like, dude, I love this. It was wacky, but I loved it. It was so good. So yeah, there you very found, excited you're about my collection. Grown up people. I know. Well, I mean, I have a lot of Lake Crusade. I post it on my Instagram. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, I have a lot of this stuff and I'm super into it. So I like finding people who are also super wackadoodle about it because that's my favorite. Wow. Practical, join a practical cult today. Practical cults are us. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. Well, thank you for showing that off. Mm -hmm. And um, now we're all super jelly, but that's okay. It's fine. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll just go we'll back get you and a bake with my, we'll get you a couple Lake Crusade products. My unbranded we'll bakeware. <laughs> nope. It's fine. I'm fine. I'll be bakeware. fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll, I'll put some information uh, in the liner notes as always about everything that we've talked about today here on You Have Me at Eat and we will have hopefully another episode for you next week. We have a lot, a lot of webinars coming up about celiac disease, a lot of new stuff that's out there as far as uh, the latest and greatest research. So if you are into that, which I know that you are, stick around for uh, what's coming up next. Remember to remember, remember to like and subscribe. Triple, triple <laughs> can. I'm killing it today. Oh yes. Yes. Own it. Just own the whole thing. Circle of pan. Circle Man, of woman, pan. camera, TV. Uh, I will. <laughs> I'm owning it as much as I can, Jules. Uh, all right. So thank you for joining us for another episode. Jules, anything else you have to share? Thank you.